Hi, my name is Derek Novak. I'm a staff scientist at Molecular Vista, and I'm here today to present to you a talk we gave here at ACS on nanoscale chemical imaging using photo-induced force microscopy on block copolymers. So what is photo-induced force microscopy? Well, it is a chemical-sensitive microscopy technique that allows us to isolate chemical species down to uh, the nanometer scale. And this is how it works. So we take a metal-coated AFM tip, we put it in proximity of a molecule, and then we illuminate that molecule with laser light that induces a dipole in the sample or in the molecule, and then the tip itself, because it's metallic, ends up creating an image dipole in that tip, and there's a small attractive force between the tip and the sample. This is just a few piconewtons of force over a very small interaction area, just basically localized to the end of the tip, so here about 10 nanometers. Now, because this force is so weak, we need a way to stimulate the cantilever to amplify the signal. So what we do is we modulate the laser, we modulate it at a frequency so that we can tap into one of the mechanical resonant modes of the AFM cantilever. That's what you're seeing here. You're seeing basically this mode being excited, and then we can kind of amplify the, that piconewton force into something a little bit more measurable. So we'll effectively take that and we'll um, decouple it from our signal from the AFM and we'll generate a graph as we tune through wavelengths of the strength of that force. All right, so here, basically, we're tuning through wavelengths from 1,400 uh, wave numbers to about 1,500 wave numbers, and we're looking at how the PIFM agrees with FTIR. Very, very good agreement. Now what we can do is move over to the other molecule, and again, we have about a 10 nanometer spatial resolution, so we should be able to now resolve that molecule. And we'll do the exact same experiment. We will modulate the laser, we will sweep the laser through different wavelengths, and we'll look at the strength of that PIFM force as a function of wavelength, giving you an absorption spectrum. And we can take this one step farther and we can apply it to something. We'll look at block copolymers. So here we've taken two block copolymers. Um, it's a PS PMMA assembly, and we're looking at polystyrene that we've highlighted at 1490 wave numbers. And you can see the PIFM FTIR agreement in terms of the spectra, and then the spatial resolution we're getting, we're able to resolve this 40 nanometer pitch block copolymer for its PS constituent. We can then change the laser to 1733 and resolve the PMMA constituent as shown in red. So you'll notice there's a complete image reversal in terms of the maximum signal, and this is because we're chemically selectively imaging one uh, component versus the other, in this case PS versus PMA or PMA versus PS. Now we can go one step farther and we can take a spectrum at each pixel as we scan our AFM, and here we're generating what we'll call a hyperspectral IR PIFM, or we call it hyper for short, and the idea is to basically build up this map of spectra at each pixel along with getting uh, an AFM topography. We can then analyze that. We have a stack of information of a spectra at each pixel, and we can then um, look at different regions inside that spectra, PS uh, as, as highlighted here, or the PMMA um, as highlighted as well. And so now you're seeing that basically the PMMA is on bottom and the PS is on top. This sample, that's what we expect. It's a PMMA base with a de-weighted PS layer on top, and you see the corresponding topography. And we can overlay, uh, as a visualization aid, the PIFM signal on top of the topography, then these are the results that you get here. PMA very strong in the bottom on the base layer, PS very strong on those islands. So in summary, basically this PIFM technique, photo-induced force microscopy, enables chemical specific imaging at the nanoscale. It works from the visible out to the mid-IR spectra, and it is a non-contact, non-invasive AFM technique. It has high tip reproducibility, and it has very it has a, a variety of applications. Here we only presented, of course, uh, block copolymers, but we've also looked at photovoltaics, organics, inorganic mo um, molecule assemblies, and LCDs and fibers. Great. Well, thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed the video.